Oh, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabriel to the Fan TV, man. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all the videos, man. And today, I want to talk about this offseason thus far for the Ravens and how Eric DaCosta and the front office has kind of changed the narrative around the Ravens, right? So, uh, maybe like a month or two months back, I did do a video about how this offseason will be a legacy to find a kind of offseason for Eric DaCosta, right? kind of all season that's where people going to look back on and whether that's going to define his tenure, how people think of him as, you know, a Ravens general manager, you know, a lot of big shoots to fill coming after IT Newsome, things like that. Right. And so far he's delivered, right. It's on the players on to do what they do on the field and the coaches do their job. But as a general manager, he's delivered this off season. Let, let's talk about it a little bit. Okay. Um, first of all, um, firing Steve Saunders, right. Guy that could have been gone years ago. So that's the thing with some of these moves that Eric DeCosta did, right? It's like, I'm going to give him credit for doing it, but some of this stuff is like, well, we could, this could have been done sooner, but we're going to take the win that has been done at all, right? Sometimes they say better late than other, right? Okay, so firing Steve Saunders, who was a big issue, uh, one of the primary reasons the Ravens got an F- minus on that um, NFL PA report. I uh, kind of talked about this in a YouTube short that I did. So uh, a guy that... Um, Ward is welcome to say the least. There are players upon players. I mean, it had to be eight to ten players coming out how saying how his training program, you know, hurt their careers, jeopardized their careers. So that was it's good that they let him go, right? Uh moving on from Greg Roman. I won't say firing because like they think they kind of did the whole we mutually parted ways kind of thing, but it was an important shift that it needs to be made, right? It seemed like the quarterback Lamar Jackson wanted a scheme change, wide receivers wanted to be more involved. And it was important to say, hey, look, we've gone as far as we've come with this offense. Let's move on to the next part, right? And then, not just getting rid of, you know, uh, Greg Roman, they overhauled pretty much a, a lot of the assistant coaches, right? You know, T. Martin is now QB coach, bringing in Greg Lewis to be the wide receivers coach, still keeping Keith Williams on the staff. And then a big one that a lot of people are mentioning that a lot of people like, and, you know, myself included, is adding Chuck Smith, a.k.a. Dr. Rush, to really get that pass rush going, hopefully to unlock a guy like Adafi Owe, you know, David Ojabo in his second year, you know, there's guys like Matabiki on the inside. So a guy, bringing in a guy who's known to unlock pass rushes, a guy that's known to help guys get after the QB, beautiful move, right? So the Ravens have done a lot organizationally to really try to shift the narrative and um, get this team kind of back to where they need to be, right? Um, it's been a while where the Ravens were, it seeming like they were determined to go down one path, a path that, wasn't very successful in terms of winning big games and being up to date with the modern NFL, but they've changed a lot of those ways. And I got to get Eric Costa for, I got to give him credit for saying that, hey, look, man, you know, things we were doing in the past wasn't working. I'm going to take that accountability and I'm going to change it, right? Um, so when he did the interview with Mike Florio on Pro Football Talk, he he took accountability for, for you know, saying, hey, look, we didn't surround Lamar Jackson with this or that. Um, I kind of failed him at helping him maximize his ability as a passer. To me, that was a big deal, right? Uh, it showed growth. It showed character. It showed that, hey, look, I'm not above admitting that I didn't do my best job and that I can't get better at my job. I love that, right? So uh, speaking of, you know, Lamar Jackson and, and, and helping him out, two years ago, Eric DeCosta promised that he would revamp the O-line, right? And two years ago in the offseason, he did that. This offseason, he promised that he would revamp the wide receiver room. And he did it in a big, big, major way, right? Um, this is one of the best wide receiver rooms the Ravens have ever had. I'm going to be quite honest with you. Uh, probably, I guess you could say that 2012 run when you had Torrey Smith and Quan Bolden, um, Jacoby Jones is probably the one that kind of rivals it. But I would say this one is better, right? Rashad Bateman, talented first-round wide receiver. We've seen that what he what he can do if he can just stay healthy. Um, they signed us to Aguilar to be wide receiver four. A lot of us were worried, me included, that he was going to be wide receiver two. No, he's wide receiver four or five, so that's great. And then signing Odell Beckham Jr., right? That's an historic move for the Ravens, right? That's a, a big name that's still in a not on the back end part of his career kind of guy that was brought to the Ravens. That really hasn't happened before. And then on top of that, they doled out up to $18 million for Odell Beckham. That's huge. That's a huge commitment. That's saying, hey, look, we're taking this office and we're going in a new, completely different direction. We're going into a... um. I guess an era of where we're going to be more up to date with the modern NFL offenses, and we're going to actually put forward our best uh, our best effort to have wide receivers to actually scare the defense. So, bring Odell Beckham here. I always say is a um, it's a it's, it's an historic signing for the Ravens. It really is. I mean, I know people are going to say, well, Odell Beckham's coming with ACL, thirty years old, this and that. Listen, the the uh, history of the Ravens bringing in a guy like Odell Beckham just doesn't happen very often. So the fact that it happened, the fact that EDC was able to do that. 
you can call it an overpay however you want to do it right sometimes you have to overpay for things right i've seen somebody i've seen people on twitter talking about well you know the ravens are doing things that are unlike themselves well when it's time to change sometimes you got to step outside of your comfort zone you got to do things that's unlike yourself right the old ravens might not have made some of these moves and that's okay it's okay to change up be different in a way that's going to help you progress forward and that's what the ravens are doing so i love that right and then it didn't stop there so we come into the draft uh my my top guard guy that i feel like was going to realistically be there at 22 was Zay Flowers, and the Ravens went and got him. A lot of Ravens fans, we love Zay Flowers, right, uh, coming out of the draft. So we were happy that he's officially a Baltimore Raven. Um, Ravens mini, Ravens rookie mini camps underway. We saw, you know, a little clips of, you know, some of the guys in action. Zay Flowers went at number four. So that's cool, man, you know. So the Ravens have a wide receiver trio of Rashad Bateman, Zay Flowers, and Odell Beckham. Now, just off of purely potential, but purely off of, the, you know, the name value and the kind of explosive playmakers that these guys are, this has a very, very, a chance to be a very, very talented and explosive offense, a scary offense, right? Listen, man, we're from, we're, we're Ravens fans, right? We're used to being that defense leads first. When you think about the Ravens, think about the defense, right? This year, you, you got to change that, right? Um, now, offense is not just about can Lamar Jackson be Superman because he doesn't have to be anymore. It's not just about, hey, is Mark, if Mark Andrews gets double team, game plan is shot. You, you can't do that. I saw a Pac-Man Jones um, trying to downplay the Ravens receiver core. He called Rashad Bateman, R Rashid Batman, and being disrespectful, not knowing this, saying he don't know his name. Talking about Zay Flowers, saying Odell's the only guy we got. You, you double Odell, what's what's going to happen? Listen, you double Odell, Zay Flowers is going to get open. Rashad Bateman's going to go open. Rashad Bateman was, was cooking his Xavier Howard uh, in the Miami game. Rashad Bateman is a guy that if he actually was on the field more, would put up more numbers. He was a wide receiver one in Greg Roman's system that was only playing by 60, 65% of the snaps. That's unacceptable, right? You, you, at the time, your best wide receiver should not be only on the field for 60% of the snaps. But that's what that's what Rashad Bateman was playing because of the system that we he was in. So um, that kind of foolishness, not worried about it. Whatever, whatever Pac-Man says, cool, right? Um, so anyway, so with this offense now, and obviously hiring Todd Monkey now, a guy that has a really a scheme that he's going to fit around the players around the time that he has. So I would say this about Eric DaCosta, right? He is and seems to be a general manager that he looks for the needs of his of his offensive and defensive coordinator and finds players to fit that system, right? So when we when Greg Roman was the OC, he did, uh, uh, sorry, in his last draft, excuse me, he drafted Isaiah Likely, drafted Charlie Kohler, two more tight ends because they fit Greg Roman's scheme, right? With uh, Todd Monkey, we've seen that in Tampa Bay. He had a whole bunch of wide receivers catching passes. So what does so what does Eric DeCosta do this offseason? Get Odell, get Aguilar, get Zay Flowers. Going to have a shot Bateman coming back. Still got Devin Duvernay. Now you have a team where you could be multiple. You could do whatever you want out there, right? Um, and uh, Todd Monkey has talked about he wants to put wide receivers in space. Let them make plays. Let them be guys that can get in one on one situations and win, right? That's beautiful, right? And then. I don't want to bury the lead. Obviously, the most important thing he did this offseason was he got the deal done with Lamar Jackson, right? And Lamar Jackson and Eric DaCosta admitted during the press conference that there were some dark days. Lamar just said he always wanted to be a Raven, a trade request just to get the ball rolling, which a lot of us figured that, you know what I'm saying? But um, no matter what, however you want to uh, shape it up, he got the job done and Lamar Jackson is now locked up for the next five years, right? It's a good deal on both ends. Lamar Jackson gets the money. He gets the no trade clause. He gets the no franchise tag clause. That's great negotiating by Lamar Jackson on, on his behalf. You know what I'm saying? So all the people that are saying he couldn't negotiate a deal, I don't know what to tell you. It's great for Eric DeCosta because he locks up his franchise quarterback for five more years. And it's a good deal, right? So there were times this offseason, multiple times this offseason, where it didn't seem like it was going to happen, right? Um, they did a good job of, I guess, not talking about it publicly too much. But as fans, as observers from the outside looking in there was some dark times right and they mentioned that right so i gotta give eric DaCosta a, a a big shout out for changing the narrative around the ravens this offseason i gotta give him a shout out because going into the offseason the narrative was who are their wide receivers their offense is you know from the 19 whatever 20s however you want to say it uh will lamar jackson even be their quarterback next year will lamar jackson is not their quarterback what kind of team are they Right. This is all things that were said and all things that were true. Um, wide receiver room is revamped. Offensive coordinator is a guy that's going to put the players in the right position to win. 
and Lamar Jackson, most importantly, your MVP quarterback is back in the fold and he's happy, man. Lamar Jackson is making jokes at the press conference about, I want to throw for 6,000 yards next season, right? A lot of people took that quote, probably took it a little too literally, right? Obviously, he's he's having fun. He's excited. He's joking. But he truly feels as though that he can have his best passing season ever. And I believe it because when Lamar Jackson in 2021, when Greg Roman allowed him to actually throw the football, he was on pace for 4,000 yards. So, and if he doesn't get hurt, he's going to hit that mark. You know, unfortunately, he got hurt and that is what it is. But um, this upcoming season, I expect Lamar Jackson to have a big year. I expect him to have this talent around that he hasn't really had ever. I mean, even going back to Louisville, his receivers weren't this good. So this is the most talented receiving core uh, Lamar Jackson has ever been around. Um, and I'm excited for that. I'm excited for him because he's a guy that's an unselfish player who wants to throw the football. I listened to the Lounge podcast, and he was saying that, um, yeah, you know, scoring touchdowns for myself is great. You know, I can run it, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But I like to throw it to my guys. You know, I, let them get in the end zone. Let them have fun with it. So, um and Eric DaCosta made all of this happen, right? I was doubting him. A lot of people was doubting him. Um, this, I said this, right? It was a legacy-defining offseason for Eric DaCosta, and he stepped up to the plate in every major way. So, um, obviously, you know, the team's not finished being built yet. Eric DaCosta, he gives the team a B. We feel like he's on that. He felt like the team's on the way to being an A. I can agree with that. If they can, you know, get a veteran pass rusher, we've been talking about this for, for a little bit while now, for a little while now. Um... And we'll see what they do if they get another corner or not. You know, obviously signing Rocket Sim was a good move. Uh, but the Ravens are uh in contention to contend, right? Um, I put a poll out there on the uh community tab, right? I asked ask you guys what what is the expectation or what's the furthest you think the Ravens will go next season? And I believe last time I looked, around 60% of it was Super Bowl. So a lot has changed, man. Because if I would did that poll a couple months ago. With Lamar Jackson um, up in the air, with Odell Beckham not being here, with you know Ty Munkin not not in not in the fold yet, a lot of moves not being made yet. I guarantee you, it wouldn't have been sixty percent Super Bowl. I can guarantee that. So um, it's a great uh, off season, right? Lamar Jackson signing is the thing that pushes it to great. Uh, the Ravens have some moves to do that make can make the team even better. Of course, you know you're, you're never really done building your roster. Uh, if these guys stay relatively healthy. Eric DeCosta has had one of the offseasons for the ages. Um, and a really, really, truly, if the Ravens can finish it off the right way, it's changing his legacy as far as being a general manager for the Baltimore Ravens. So uh, that's what I got to say about it, man. Crazy offseason for Eric DeCosta, crazy offseason for the Ravens. And um, I'm happy that it's gone the way it's gone. Now, the only thing we have to worry about is, guys, please stay healthy if possible. You know, injuries can be fluke, but the guys stay healthy, man. This Ravens team looks mighty, mighty good. Uh, that's my thoughts on it, man. Let me know you guys' thoughts in the comments, man. But it's Gabriel. This is Fan TV. I'm out.